about what men reject, God accepts. Hallelujah. And so praise the Lord. We have a word for you tonight. I want you to pay attention. Get your Bibles if you have your Bibles. And we're going to go to Judges, the 11th chapter. Judges, the 11th chapter. Uh, what's amazing to me is that what we see as trash, God sees as a treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we see as waste, God sees as worship. And so I want to talk to you today. Uh, this is going to hit home with a lot of men, especially if you went through some type of rejection of some sort. And, you know, rejection can do two things. It will either make you bitter or it will make you better. It's just a matter of how you handle the rejection. Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know it is the hope of your calling, what's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, now hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. We'll be careful to give you all the glory due to your name. And all the citizens of this great kingdom say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, Judges, the 11th chapter. We'll dive right into the word of the Lord. It said, now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. Jephthah was a mighty man of valor, which means he was a man of war. He was skillful in fighting. But he was the son of a prostitute. Praise God. I say he was the son of a harlot or of a prostitute. And Gilead begot Jephthah, which was his father. Gilead's wife bore sons as well. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out. Isn't that something? When they grew up, they closed the door on Jephthah. And, and they told Jephthah, even though Jephthah had the same dad as, as them, he had a different mother. And his mother was a prostitute. So when the wife's children grew up, they drove Jephthah out. I want you to notice they closed the door on Jephthah. And this is what they said. That you shall have no inheritance in our father's house because you are illegitimate. Isn't that something? In other words, you're a bastard. You are not a legitimate child or a son. And you have no inheritance with us. And so they put him out and because you are a son of another woman. Isn't that something? Now let me tell you what Jephthah's name means. His name means he will open. <laughs> they closed the door on him, but his name meant he will open. You know what that meant? That meant if Jephthah allowed God to develop him, in his character, allow God to define, refine his gift, no matter what they say, God says he will open. So they close the door on Jephthah, but God's going to open it back up again. Praise the Lord. And so I'm, I'm telling you that if you go through any kind of rejection, if you allow it to develop you, it'll make you a better person. See, you either get better or you get bitter. If you get bitter, then it affects everybody. Because a root, of, a root of bitterness will spring up and many will be defiled. So praise God. If you've been through some kind of rejection, I'm here to tell you, let it define you, let it refine you, but let it make you better. Hallelujah. Listen at this. It says, they said you're not going to inherit with us. Praise the Lord. And then verse 3 said, then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob. The word Tob is good. The land of good. And he hung out with worthless men. But they say worthless men banded together with Jephthah. You know what that means? That means there were some gangsters that didn't feel valued either. And they had a low self-esteem. And, and they drew to Jephthah because they recognized that Jephthah had a gift. I want you to remember this. That whenever there's a crisis, the world looks for a gift. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whenever there's a crisis, the world looks for a gift. I, I remember when the... When Egypt was having big problems, 
and, and they didn't know how to solve their problems, they were going to go through a great crisis, a famine, they went and looked for a gift. And they found a gift named Joseph in the prison who had the answers, amen, because Joseph had learned how to download his information from heaven, amen. Joseph got revelation, advanced knowledge. That's what we're going to have to have today. If we're going to live in this day and age, we're going to have to have advanced knowledge, praise God. So listen at this. It says, the worthless men banded together with Jephthah, and they went out raiding with him. That means they went into different cities, and, and they were just throwing them and taking stuff, amen? They were, they were raiding and taking stuff and taking goods, and most of the cities they hit, they were hitting cities. And listen, the information about what they were doing was getting back to Jephthah's family. And, and so they, uh, they found out that Jephthah had developed his gift, that Jephthah was good at fighting. It always said in the beginning that he was a man, uh, of, a man of valor. He was a mighty man of valor, which means he was a warfaring man. But he developed his ability to fight. And, and so the men, listen, when people are rejected, believe it or not, they draw to rejected people. You know, people who are rejected will find themselves around other rejected people. But it was a good thing because Jephthah developed his character. He developed his skills, and he knew exactly what he was called to do. See, when you find your gift, you need to refine it and define it and get ready to serve it to the world. Praise God. And so Jephthah was hanging out with these men and said, it came to pass, though, at the time, the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And it so was when the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And then the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tyre. What? They went to get Jephthah. You mean tell me they're looking for the same guy they rejected? Same one they put out? Same one they closed the door on? Yes, because whenever there's a crisis, they're looking for a gift. And remember, Jephthah had developed this gift. He had a skill for fighting, and they needed him because they were in some trouble. Praise God. Whenever trouble comes, they're going to find a gift. So they went to find Jephthah, and they asked Jephthah. They said, then they said to Jephthah, come and be our commander that we may fight against the people of Ammon. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, did you not hate me? Didn't you put me out from my father's house? Why have you come to me now? When you're in distress, <laughs> hallelujah. Whenever the world is in distress, they're going to look for a gift. Praise God. Oh, they're looking for me now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I thought I'd just slip that in. Boy, I tell you, they look for a gift when they're in distress. The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, that is why we turn again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the people of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, if you take me back home to fight against the people of Ammon and the Lord deliver them to me, shall I be your head? In other words, I ain't coming back just to win the battle and then you kick me back to the curb again. You're going to make me the head over it or I ain't coming and I'm not going to de deliver you guys out of your distress. And so they agreed. The elders said to Gilead, yeah, uh, to Jephthah, the Lord will be a witness between me and you. If we do not according to our words. Now, what I want you to understand, Jephthah, he realized, and we're not going to read it all, but we, he realized that the battle was not uh, a between two armies. It was a, a between two gods. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's what Jephthah said. Jephthah said, listen, this, this, first of all, he tried to appease the king by saying, look, why are you coming against these people anyway? We, we don't have no beef with you, God. But they said, yeah, but we want that land. And he said, but it ain't your land because God gave it to us. When we came out of bondage, God gave us this land. So it's really our land. But he said, but if that's how y'all want it, we're going to do it like y'all want to do it. Now, I'm asking you for peace. But if we can't come to some kind of agreement with it, then we're going to have to bring it to the street. We're going to take it to the hood. Now, you remember, Jephthah was a gangster anyway, and he was running with thugs. So it wasn't no big deal for him to fight. He was trying to communicate. But if we got to go to blows, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Praise God. But he understood that the battle wasn't between two armies. It was a, between two gods. And that's what he said. He said, listen, this is a battle between my God 
and the God of the Amorites, or the God of the Moabites, or the God of, of, of the Ammonites. And he said, and I know one thing, they are no match for the God I serve. Amen. But I want you to understand, if I go, then I'm going only because you made me ahead over this situation. And man, I tell you what, the thing about that is, is he had been rejected in the beginning. But remember, the name of my message is, what man reject, God accepts. God accepted Jephthah. He anointed Jephthah for this time. And now God is going to use Jephthah to bring deliverance to them again. Amen. And it's amazing that he made this, this vow. Uh, he, he committed and said, Lord, if you give me victory, whatever comes out of my house, I'll, I'll sacrifice it to you. Now, according to, according to uh, the, the, the law, it was forbidden to make human sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So we know that if you have understanding concerning the scriptures, God would never require Jephthah, even though Jephthah made a vow out of his own mouth, God would not hold him to a vow that would violate his word. Amen. But this is the thing you got to understand. The commitment was that whatever comes out of my house, I'll sacrifice it to the Lord. And, and this is a spiritual principle. And so it, whatever, when he said whatever comes out of the house, if, if it was an animal, then it was going to be an animal sacrifice. But if it was a, a person, it was going to be a consecration. And so when he went to war and took over the battle, and we know that they took and won the battle, and when he was coming back, the first oh. thing came out was his daughter, his only child. And she came out glorifying God, and Jephthah said, Lord, have mercy. Now, I've made a vow that I will give my daughter to the Lord as a sacrifice. And I'm going to tell you, he kept his vow. He didn't slay his daughter, but he consecrated his daughter, and she lived in the temple like Samuel lived in the temple. She lived a consecrated and dedicated life. And the reason why I know that is because when he told her what he had vowed, she said, well, give me some time to mourn with my friends right. because I know that there's going to be a time after that I'm not going to ever have a child, that you never going to have a grandchild because I'm going to be given over to the things of the spirit and I'm going to live in the temple. And praise God, listen to me. I want you to understand something that you may have started off on a rejected path. But remember, Jephthah's name meant God will open. Hallelujah. God will open. They closed the door, but God opened it up again. Why did he open the door for Jephthah? Because Jephthah stayed in a good position. Jephthah stayed with his heart right. Jephthah didn't get defiled by what happened. He didn't get offended by your brothers and your sisters who kicked you to the curb. He didn't take it personal and begin to carry a grudge. He didn't allow bitterness to set in his heart and then go around and spread it to everybody else. You know how you do. Your brothers do you wrong and then you go tell everybody. And you got that thing spread like a cancer. Now, my children are being affected by what happened with me and my brother. And my children's children are being affected by what happened with me and my brother. And so now my little brother, my son, he don't want food with my brother's son. Oh, God help us. My son don't want food with my brother's son because of what happened with me and my brother. Come on, y'all got to get things together. You better put that stuff on the altar and leave it there. Amen. You got to deal with the root of bitterness that's in your heart. Amen. I'm telling you, Jephthah protected himself. He covered himself so he wouldn't get defiled. He was better instead of bitter. Some of you all uh, can't say that. Some of y'all have become bitter, and you've allowed that thing to flow into your family. You've affected your children, and you're going to affect your children's children. But today, you can turn that thing around. You can put it under the blood today. You can release that thing today. Don't walk around holding a grudge, having animosity in your heart. Because let me tell you something. If you hold animosity in your heart, you shut down heaven. You close heaven. You living under a closed heaven because you got unforgiveness in your heart. You got a bitterness in your heart, and heaven is closed to you. You want to open heaven? You better open your heart. Glory to God. I'm just telling you like it is. Let me tell you something. If a snake bit me right now, a poisonous snake, and I determined in my heart I'm going to chase the snake down till I catch him and I'm going to cut his head off. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to die 
ain't in the process. Glory to God. What I'm telling you is, you can't hold unforgiveness in your heart thinking that you're going to keep, keep on holding and harboring that stuff and it ain't going to affect you. See, we think unforgiveness is the poison that we drink, but somebody else is going to get sick. No, 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 it don't work like that. It's going to poison you. You better get yourself together. Jephthah didn't allow what he went through to define who he was. Amen. Jephthah defined his gift. He was a fighter. He was a man of valor. And so what he did was he hung out. Jephthah didn't go hang out with guys. They came hang out with him. They recognized a the gift. They recognized that Jephthah had something they needed. And let me tell you something. Rejection will always re uh, draw to other people who've been rejected. Listen, if you want to know where you're going... Check out your friends. Right. You ain't going no further than the people you hang out with. Praise God. Because let me tell you why. Your friends going nowhere want you to go with them. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you that you're going to have to check your bucket because your bucket got a hole in it. Go with the God. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that God is speaking a word to you today. And I'm telling you that. Listen, he might have started off as a zero, but he ended up as a hero, praise God. Because God can take a zero and make a hero when he lean and trust in the Lord with all of his heart. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And guess what? He is going to direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not. To your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path. Let me tell you something. It's not hard to trust God. It's not hard at all. You just got to believe. See, when you say faith, faith is now. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Faith is now. I was sharing with my brother before we started this ceremony. I said, you know, I remember when we were out in the dump, me and my little brother, we were working, and we were working. We had some pilots on the truck. And I threw a pile of over. We had both that had the pitches that was so heavy. And it started to rock back and hit my leg. Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> Glory to God. When it hit the leg, bop, I heard the crack. My leg was hanging like this. And my little brother was on the bottom, on the ground. I was on the truck. And in a split second, I had to believe God. I said, you know what? I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the healer. I believe I receive. And I said, because I do believe, I'm going to respond. I said, I'm going to jump. My little brother said, jump. <laughs> he said, Lord, have mercy. Man, I went there. It was too late. It was too late, Cherry. Bye bye. See, now, if I'd have thought about it, I'd have never jumped off that dump truck. Boy, let me tell you something. My leg was broke. Sure as I'm telling you. But let me tell you something. See, when I hit the ground, all I could hear was pop. It's a what? Snap right back there, please. Glory to God. I must have ran around the dump three, four times. My little brother still was folding up like this. He didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> Lord, this thing is going out of his mind. Praise God. But guess what? If I want to jump, I would have went straight to the emergency. I had a cast on for a couple of months. And guess what? But God was right there with me. He said, if you can believe me, just jump. If you, let me tell you, you know when I got healed? When you think my leg got healed? Before. As I went. <laughs> in the air. See, when I when I went there, God said, I got you now. You know what I'm You didn't let go of everything you believe. In the natural, you know, you got to let go. It's like the widow. The widow, when did the widow receive the benefit of being blessed? When she went and made the little cake for the prophet. When did the water turn into wine? When they went and presented to the king. Let me tell you, if that water wouldn't have turned into wine, the king would have had their head. You heard what I said? If they had presented water instead of wine, the king would have had their head. So they had to go in faith. Jesus said, go present it to the king. They took water and filled up the jug. They didn't see no miracle happen. They just filled the jug with water. He said, bring it to the king. Now, you know, in the natural, he said, this dude is going out of his mind. He's trying to get her killed. <laughs> He's going to tell me, bring it to the king. I know he got water. I saw him put water. But when did the water turn to wine? As they went, praise God. Look at the ten lepers. They went to Jesus. He said, okay, you want to be well? Go show yourself to the priest. I'm looking at my skin. I got leprosy everywhere. My fingers falling off and everything. He's <laughs> talking about go show yourself to the priest. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to operate in faith. I say, okay, if Jesus said I believe, that settles it, right? So here I am. I'm going to the priest. When did the leprosy leave? As 
Yes, they went. <laughs> <laughs> if they would have never went, they would have never got cleansed. What you waiting on? Mm. What you waiting on to respond to the things of God? What are you waiting on to make a commitment? What are you waiting on to give God your best? Because mm. when you go, that's when he's going to meet you right where you are. I was telling him, I said, let me tell you, I had a situation happen with me. I'm in church Sunday morning. I got $165. I need $550 Monday morning for my rent. I don't know what to do, Lord. I'm thinking I could call Joe. I could call Sam. You know, we always lean into our natural understanding. I'm going to call somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm looking for delivery from somewhere. <laughs> God said, give it up. I said, what? He said, give it to me. I could multiply. I believe you, Lord. But I need this money. <laughs> he said, if you believe me, let me have it. I stuck it in the envelope. I said, Lord, look, it's a big old tell you. <laughs> I need this money. He said, boy, give me that money. Man, let me tell you, I put that $155 in the envelope. And I said, Lord, listen, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you did it for Abraham. You'll do it for me. <laughs> I put it in the envelope and let it go. Sunday night, I'm at the house. Me and my wife, she said, you know, tomorrow morning, I pay rent. I said, God will provide. <laughs> he going to do it. I don't know how, but he going to do it. Let me tell you something. About 8.30 that night, a lady by the name Miss Sarah knocked on the door. Never been to my house before a day in her life. I asked her, do I say, how you doing, Miss Sarah? She said, God woke me up, told me to come to your house. I said, well, praise be to God. Let me open this door then. Come on in here. She came in. Uh, she told me, she said, God told me to write this check. Man, let me tell you something. I, I just started worshiping God. I didn't even want to say I'm going to check it. <laughs> you know, in the natural, you want to say, how much it is? Did God double it or what? <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. The lady said, God told me to write this check. Do you know that check was $550? Exactly what I needed. Boy, let me tell you something. God ain't slack concerning his promises. If he said it, it's coming to pass. Praise God. Man, I had a hallelujah time once I got that check. Boy, let me tell you something. I run around that house about three, four times glorifying God. Because that lady had no idea what I was dealing with. But let me tell you something. If God could command the raven to feed the prophet, he could command the lady to come to my house. Amen. If he commanded the widow to feed the prophet, he could command the bank to give you some money. Amen. But God could command anything he wants. Amen. You just got to understand that he's God all by himself. Amen. Amen. I say he's God all by himself, and he declares the end from the beginning. Amen. Boy, let me tell you something. When you put your confidence in God, I promise you this. When you trust God with your whole heart, everything is going to end up well. You know what I'm saying? If God said it, that, that, let the end be well. That, praise God. I'm under the order of Melchizedek who came to make things right by telling the truth. Amen. So when I honor God, when I understand who I am, no matter how the situation looks, I know at the end of it, I'm going to rise to the top. Praise God. Remember, when men reject, God accepts. God will ordain you. He will anoint you to do great works. You got to realize that God has a purpose for your life. I want you to understand something. You would have never been born if there was something God didn't have needed done that made you necessary. I say you wouldn't have ever been conceived if there was not something God needed done that made you necessary. You say, how do you know that? I say, I know that because purpose comes before the product. God had a purpose in mind before you were created. And now it's time for you to find your gift and serve it to the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know how much time we have, but I want to talk to you. I just want you to understand that this is serious business for us. And I don't take this lightly. I've seen God move in so many ways till I can't begin to fathom some of the stuff I've been through. But it was because I was willing to dare to believe. I, I took him at his word and I believed. And, and I'm going to tell you this. When people believe the prophet, the Bible says, so shall they be established. 
And so I promise you, I've been believing God's word for a long time. I've taken him at his word. I've trusted him in many times, in many occasions, and I've watched the miraculous happen in my life. I've lived in, in, in one residence for two years and didn't pay a dime because God so fit to bless me. Amen. But that comes from a life of devotion. See, when you have been devoted to God, you have nothing to worry about. Because God can take care of us better than we can take care of ourselves. I want you to understand God is here right now. He's here and he's waiting on you to make a decision to change. You've been trying all your life to do it your way. Now give it to God. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He says, I'm the door. If anybody comes any other way but through me, guess what? He's a thief and a robber. I don't care what you've been taught. I don't care what's been said. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. You can try to go all those different ways, but I promise you this. If you go any other way but the way of the cross, you're a thief and a robber. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Let me tell you this. Stop looking for your future in front of you. Stop looking for your future around you. It's not any of those places. Your future is in you. What you need to do is discover who you are. Praise the Lord. Whatever God wanted a thing to be, he put it in the thing. The reason why he hid it in the thing is because we get in some tight situations and the first thing we want to do is sell it. See, if God would have given you a gift, you'd have sold it a long time ago. Praise God he didn't <laughs> give it to you. He hid it in you so you could spend time with you to discover what it is. But when a man finds his gift, it'll make room for him to set it before great men. Find your gift and then serve it to the world. God bless you. Hallelujah. Until we meet again, Sunday, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, we have our Sunday morning service. Wednesday nights, we have our Bible study. Friday night, we have our uh, Friday night fire meeting for the men. Uh, I want you to be encouraged and know one thing, that God is not slack concerning his promises. If he said it, it's coming to pass. God bless you. God keep you. If you want to support this ministry, we have Give the Fire set up where you can sow into the ministry. Remember, if you eat your seed, you have no harvest. <laughs> God bless you. God keep you. Amen.